Hi everyone, welcome back to Poetology. Today we're going to talk about trans poetry, and here by trans I mean queer, non-binary, genderqueer, agender, transgender poetry. Um, so this means that uh, not all of the poets I cover necessarily identify as trans, it's not a statement about their identity, it's more on a continuum with my previous video on queer poetry. And I will link that other video below this one, so you can check that first if you wish. But there's no need to watch it in order to see this one. So I will start with poets who use they them pronouns. So they may identify as queer rather than trans, and of course this is also on a continuum. So please see these categories as a bit more fluid. The first one I'll talk about is something I read over the weekend. It's Autopsy by Dante Collins, and it's a really, really powerful poetry collection about grief, about being black and queer, about being adopted and losing um, your mother, and all the grief and all the contradictory emotions that can come up when you are grieving for someone with whom you had a complex relationship. The second poet I would like to talk about is Danae Smith, and I have two of their collections, Insert Boy Here and Don't Call This Dead. Again, very powerful poetry on um, being black and queer. They write in a very a varied way, very experimental way, sometimes visually expansive like this. Here you have the words, my blood, written all over a page like this. There is a lot here about death and about violence, but also about love. A very poignant poetry collection. Next on my list is Jay Bernard, who has written a collection since this pamphlet. I only have the pamphlet, but um, all of their poetry is amazing. And this one was so refreshing when I read it because it's very, very queer, specifically genderqueer. It revisits the tale of Sir Morian, Knights of the Round Table. So it's a very queer and black rewriting of European medieval literature, and I really think we need more of that. The next one is fairly well known and accessible as well, and it's Andrea Gibson. I have Lord of the Butterflies, and the madness phase. I discovered Andrea Gibson because someone who worked at a pub said that I looked like Andrea Gibson. I don't know if that's true. I think my haircut was very Andrea Gibson-ish on that day. That was great because after that I checked them out and they are a spoken word poet. You can actually google them and watch so many of their performance on YouTube. So if you don't know them, make sure you watch something. I'll probably link a video below. And also, if you're a little intimidated by poetry in general, this is an excellent choice because it's fairly easy to read. It's pretty good. And for people who are non-binary and who want to explore those topics, it's a great read. And then I have a soft spot for Eileen Miles. For me, Eileen is like an iconic New York school poet. Um, I wish we could still just move to New York and find places to live on uh, minimal salaries and like on enough jobs, but it's become harder, I think. They have a very specific style, which may not appeal to everyone. Here I have two of their collection. One is I Must Be Living Twice which is an excellent place to start because it's new and selected poems from um, their entire career. So you can really have a good overview of everything that they've written. And also Evolution is one of the more recent collections and I think it's great. So yes, another place where you can go to um, read Eileen Miles. You can also find quite a few poems online if you want to give it a go. 
as well as performances. So it's very accessible if you want to uh, have a look at what they do. The next one is a collection I'm working on for a book review. I will link it when it is published. It's Shan J, Bury Me in Thunder. And I think I included it in the indigenous poetry review that I did in another video. I'll link that one as well. Um, Shan J's poetry is so beautiful and so powerful. I really, really like it, but it's also slightly mystifying. So I've been working hard on um, trying to tease out the themes and make some links and start building an interpretation. So that's an ongoing process for me, but I really enjoy having a poetry collection by an agenda poet who writes in such a personal and vulnerable way. The themes here are transgenerational trauma, um, they are about heritage and reconnecting to a heritage that was broken by um, the speaker's mother being adopted. It's um, very anchored in the natural world and in the body and there is a lot of pain and it's also about healing. So if you read this, I really want to know what you think. Uh, I would love to discuss this with someone. Another one that I also reviewed in the Indigenous Poetry video is Quoley Driscoll's Walking with Ghosts. My favourite poem in here is titled Map of the Americas and the first lines are I wish when we touch we could transcend history in double helixes of dark and light on wings we build ourselves. And it describes the body as a map of the America and part of the poem actually looks like the Americas as well. Yeah, I really like it, partly because I'm interested in mapping and that sort of thing and geographies. The next one is by the 87 Press. It's Kaspar Heinemann's Novelty Theory. This is a very postmodern and anarchistic collection of poems. It's quite wordy and quite dense, but there's a wonderful play with words and theories. The 87 Press generally publishes very experimental and politically engaged poets. I think they have some really great collections. At the back here, Banu Kapil has written an endorsement and asks, can poetry be a form of cultural revenge? If you think that poetry can be a form of cultural revenge, then you will appreciate Kaspar Heinemann's contribution to that genre. The next few poets are trans women, and I will start with Ariel Twist, who was also in my Indigenous Poetry uh, Review. And this is Disintegrate, Dissociate. There is so much longing and so much tenderness in Ariel Twist's poetry. It talks about identity and the body and sexuality in very interesting ways. The first poem is titled Dear White Cis Men. And then I have two collections by Gwen Benaway. The most recent is Holy Wild and the other is Daybreak. Both tackle the body, questions of embodiment, sexuality, and gender identity. I also have Why Dust Shall Never Settle Upon This Soul by Rika Aoki, who is Asian American. Rika Aoki's writing is quite straightforward in some ways. It feels a bit journalistic, like the speaker is describing everyday experiences in quite a narratological way, um, simple storytelling, but um, shaped in a very effective way. There's a lot about trans loss and also a celebration of the joy in trans life together. Many of these collections have a very raw, very rough, very sad element, a lot of work on grief in many of these collections, but also a lot of joy emerging out of free expression. And finally, here is a big, massive anthology, Troubling the Line, which is edited by T.C. Tolbert and Trace Peterson, Trans and Genderqueer Poetry and Poetics. 
um, which came out in 2013, but is really, really excellent. It has so many, so many trans and genderqueer poets, and very often you get a portrait. I quite like that, actually, that there's um, a picture of the poet. Then you get uh, several poems by the same person, and often at the end there's also a passage where they explain their writing process or something about their gender or why they write or how they write and you get to have a little um, snippet of their poetic lives. I really enjoy that. I think it's, a, it's an amazing collection. I'm very slow at reading it but I think it's because I don't ever want to finish it. So this was my quick run through through some of my um, personal queer slash genderqueer slash non-binary slash agender slash trans poetry and I hope you find something to like. Also there are many many others that I have not mentioned and in fact there are many others that I don't even know. So let me know in the comments what you are reading, whether you are interested in some of these poets, and more importantly, if you know others that I have not covered and that I should absolutely get. I'm thinking of C.A. Conrad, for example, whom I love, but I don't have any of their collections. Max Wolf Valerio as well. I need to get my hands on their poems. Um, so many others, I'm sure. Let me know what your suggestions are. I'm very, very happy to explore this further. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you again very soon. Bye.